All right, welcome everyone. Uh, today's video is going to be taking the Daiwa Gekka Beach and Air TW uh, out on some open water. Uh, I got a lake here. I'm going to be doing some long distance casting with a variety of lures uh, just to see how different this spool is uh, for that long distance casting versus the short distance distance casting that I did in an earlier video. I'll put a link to that one up above. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing with this lure, uh, with this uh, review, I'm going to be casting mostly uh, like finesse bass lures or some little bit heavier panfish lures. I'm not casting tiny, tiny lures because uh, this reel isn't really designed for that. It says it's able to cast down to like one or two grams, but I feel that uh, given it for open water, and especially for saltwater fishing, this is all fresh water I'm using it for. You can be using a little bit heavier lures in the bait finesse category, so I'm going to try that out and see how the, the results are. Uh, to start out with the rod, uh, the rod is the Dobbin Sierra series. This is that rod that I've been using for quite a while. Uh, it's a finesse rod. It's rated 1 16th of an ounce to 5 16th of an ounce, uh, 1.5 grams to 8 grams. And then it's a uh, 2 to 8 pound line. So it's a, it's definitely a bass oriented BFS rod, which I think would be really good for inshore, uh, inshore fishing as well. So if you do a lot of like inshore uh, saltwater fishing for like redfish or whatever, uh, this, ro this rod would probably be pretty good for that too. Uh, the, the line on here, I'll talk just very briefly. This is the Verivis. Uh, it's 10 pound. Uh, it's the Super Trout Advanced Series. It's their new bait finesse line. I'm not going to talk too much on it right now because this is my first time using it. Uh, I am also using this without a leader. I just want to test the abrasion resistance part of it. I do plan on using this with like a four or six pound fluorocarbon leader. First lure I'm going to test, and I'll get into the other lures as well, uh, just after this. Uh, this is a Z-Man. This is one of their jig head, their skirted jig heads with the with the wire weed guard. I think this is a t one tenth of an ounce head, and then it has a Z-Man, uh, one of their El Elaze Tech craws on here. Uh, so this is a pretty typical Ned, uh, about the size of a Ned rig or uh, other sort of like finesse soft plastics that a lot of people use. And this is gonna give me a good chance to be able to test out the line as well. All right, as far as lures that I'm gonna be testing, uh, of course, I talked about that jig. Uh, this is also another jig. This is a Euro Tackle. This is the, one of the tungsten jig heads with the two inch B vibe. Uh, that's pretty typical panfish slash bass lure or trout, you know, whatever finesse uh, lure you're talking about. All uh, right here, this is a Suonora pencil bait. It's a top water bait uh, and it weighs 3.1 grams. Uh, so that's that's that can be somewhat difficult to cast if there's some wind. There's a little bit of wind here today. Uh, this is a, this is a new frog that came out. Uh, this is the, the King Froggy. Uh, it's it's made by it's made by a lure maker. You can see all the social media tags right there. Lex Papinka. Uh, they're pretty good. There's also some little tiny micro ones. I know Rara is casting a micro one, but I wanted to try that size out. It looks pretty cool. And then this is a Jackson Cyril. Uh, this is the topwater frog. Got some single hooks on there, some blades. So this thing can be kind of hard to cast in the wind. It still casts okay, but it does catch a lot of wind. So this is going to test the adaptability of the brakes. And this is that line that the Veravis Super Trout Advanced Bait Finesse. It's a little bit, it's a 0.6. That is one thing I'll mention. 0.6 go. That's the Japanese line rating. It's more focused on diameter versus braking strength. And that is what Daiwa recommends. Not this specific line, but that size braided line filled up halfway, which is exactly what I did. So that takes one more variable out of the uh, equation. So I'm gonna jump over to casting the, the jig right now. All right, so casting, I'm gonna set the brakes to, and I'll put them about halfway. Make sure nothing, okay. All right, that was this little test cast. It actually felt pretty nice. I'm gonna turn my drag up just in case there's something. It's been really cold. It's getting been getting below freezing at nighttime. Well, that really is smooth, even with braid. It's getting below freezing at nighttime, so maybe the sunny temp might bring some of those bass up shallow, but I'm not really doing this to catch fish. I can turn those brakes down. All right, I'm gonna be on I'm gonna be on eight. Right, it definitely went out a little bit further. And it felt nice and controlled the whole time. I didn't I didn't feel I didn't feel that I had to thumb thumb the spool at all. I hurry this back. Man, that reel is smooth. I should mention uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, I did put some new parts on here. I got these from Digitaka when I ordered that Conquest BFS. Uh, these SLP work Zion knobs, they're the darker red color. And then the same thing with the SLP works Zion Dragstar. It matches the the red accents on the Gekabesian perfectly. 
So if you're looking at that, uh, make sure you get the darker red metallic color. Don't get the lighter red color if you're looking to match up on the Gecko Vision Air TW. All right, I am, I'll put my brakes on seven. I mean, that, that definitely, it casts out there pretty good. And you can see that line. I'm gonna talk about the line just a little bit in this video. I'm gonna to try to be concise and talk about the Gecko Vision. But there is, I think it's 1.7 meters of, of green. And then there's uh, 30 centimeters, so 0.3 meters of um, the yellow color on there. And you can see it really good. Like there's a green background of the trees back there. There's a little bit of gray, but I can see, I can see the green pretty good, but I can really see the yellow. And being able to see the distinct difference between green and yellow is really gonna make you be able to watch your line a lot better. So if you do watch your line, you use a lot of braided line, which a lot of people do with BFS gear. I mean, that's, that's definitely a respectable distance. It feels like I'm casting, almost feels like I'm casting like a half ounce bass jig or something with a, like say a, a medium heavy bass rod. So it kind of reminds me of like the same sort of like wrist control accuracy, except for it's just less force on your wrist. So you're actually able to be a little bit more accurate. And especially if you have like shoulder injuries or anything like that, it'll, it'll help out a lot there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, kind of similar results uh, a little bit to how I was doing in the stream I was able to turn the brakes down quite a bit but for me I feel that the accuracy is more important than the overall distance yeah I don't I'm on I'm on brake setting five and it, it feels it does feel really nice casting out there and I should mention I before when I was doing some testing I tried to do it out on the lake on the boat and uh, I was having some issues because there's a lot of wind, uh, not with casting, but with filming. And then also being getting out later, the sun angle on the on the lake, it just made it for terrible viewing experience for you. So I'm doing this from the from the lake shore, but I, I had more line on I, during that time. And I felt that the casting was choked off. Now that I have 0.6 size line and it's 50 meters of it on there, I know well, that does feel nice. Like that's gonna get getting some distance. Uh, I, I feel that it does make a huge difference. Usually I'm not one to really follow the, the manufacturer's recommendations. I kind of make my own recommendations. All right, now I'm gonna try out that Jackson Frog. Uh, this, this should be able to test the adaptability of the brakes. I'm gonna turn these brakes up a little bit more. There. I turn them up back up to 11. Uh, that's the setting I started off with that jig. Oh, that's, that's definitely choked off for distance. A lot of good control though, without being yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, if you want to look at the lure real quick, this is just the action of the lure, a little bonus feature for you guys. So just the action of the lure. It has those, those blades that'll kind of trailer behind and spin. So that's what attracts the fish in. I mean, you could twitch it and stuff like that, but generally I just do straight retrieve. I've got a lot of small mouth on it. I haven't used it all that much. And that's how it sits like that. But now there is some wind coming into my face. I'll turn those brakes down. I'll, I'll put it on eight. No, that ca that casts out really nice. And I think what it is, uh, is before for me, I, I put more than that 50 meters of line on there. I was like, oh, well, I'm just gonna fill up, fill up this pool, who cares? And it casts all right still. Uh, I was doing a lot of open water casting and it was really windy out and the sun angle is terrible. So for a, for a viewing experience for the, for you guys, uh, it would have been terrible to watch for that video, but it was some good testing that, that I was able to have. Let me turn that down to six. But I did know, I am noticing now that having, I am noticing now that having uh, that 50 meters of 0.6 line. So it's about 10 pound, which is more than good enough for most of you BFS fishing. Uh, I've noticed that it's been casting a lot, a lot better. Like it's almost like stress-free. Like, like I landed, look at that. And my spool tension knob is set to have barely any side to side play. I was able to just cast that out there, uh, thumb free, but it doesn't feel like, you, you can set any reel to be thumb free, but you're really gonna restrict casting distance. I don't feel that that's happening with the Gekka Bijan. I don't feel that I am setting the brakes to such a controlled setting that I'm sacrificing distance. I am going to turn the brakes down, of course. Oh, I had a little bit of line fluff up early cast, but then the, the cast got rid of it. So um, I'm probably at like about the max brake setting that I would do with this. 
I mean, that's pretty decent distance, especially with a little bit of a crosswind right there. I was waiting for a big bass to come up and hit that, but it ain't gonna happen. I should have done that with the, that jig, but I'm gonna try some pitching too. I mean, that pitch is out there nice. I mean, this lure isn't super heavy. I think it's, I think it's about four grams. I don't know, I'll have to look. I'll put the, I'll put the weight up here, but I have a little piece of grass almost hit. Oh, that, that pitch is pretty nice too. But I, I will try that with a different lure uh, for pitching. I'm gonna switch over. I'm gonna switch over to um, probably that. I'm thinking that that frog, just because I want to try it out. To be honest, it's probably not the best lure to use for this, but I do want to try that out. So this is a. It's a, the king froggy. It, it's made by. I, I'll put all the links and stuff down below. But it's made by Papinka Lure over on Instagram. Uh, over on Instagram, I was a Lex Papinka. It is the the user. In, the Instagram username. But Bay Finesse Empire carries these frogs. And I know that Jimmy over at Raw Fishing, he had he's he was trying out the the micro frog, like the tiny, tiny one. Uh, I don't feel that's gonna be a good test for this reel, but it is it does look like a really fun lure, and I do actually want to try that out uh, come springtime. I uh, see if I can get any crappie or bluegill to come up on those. But this is the frog, it looks like a looks kind of like a <laughs> the only way I kind of think about it is like a a little anime, like a little anime, like caterpillar type thing. Almost like if you ever seen like Totoro or anything like that. It kind of looks like one of those types of creatures. Little X's over the eyes. It looks kind of cool, uh, but I think that will catch bass for sure. Uh, I don't know how much water would get in there. This isn't a lure review. It's a it's a real review. I got to remember that. Oh, that's cute. This thing actually does weigh quite a bit, or at least it seems like it's gonna cast pretty good. Oh wow. <laughs> I forgot to set the brake setting. Look at that. <laughs> Almost all my line got off. I don't know. That was probably like a 35 meter cast. I don't know. But maybe not. Maybe 30 meters. But still, that's... I don't know why I'm walking that back. Like, I'm going to catch something with it right now. I could, but that's going to take a long time. No, I think cast out there really nice. I was very surprised. This is just the, the action of the lure if you want to see that. It does sit back a little bit. Oh, is that? That's had a little perch or something. And then you have that little blade in the, if you can see that little shimmer, it's a little blade that shimmers in the back and kind of has a little walking profile. I would not pick that up from just looking at it. It has a nice little tiny, tiny shimmy to it. Oh yeah, let out another cast. Oh yeah, that thing is out there. Yeah, that time. All right, I gotta reel that thing back. No, so I don't think I need to test this lure all that much. It does, it does have some pretty good action. So if you are living somewhere that does have a good frog bite, still like say somewhere down south, uh, it's definitely worth it. Like, if you see, that's that's pretty nice. I do like that action on there. Like almost like it skips across the top of the water. But I'm not even gonna try that out that much more. I mean, obviously it casts out there, and I'm not gonna sit there and waste a bunch of time with it. But I'm actually kind of. The lure looked kind of more of a novelty slash gimmicky at first. But that has some pretty decent action, and this isn't a tiny, tiny micro frog. I mean, you can still you can still set the hook on that thing pretty good, and it casts out there good too. So maybe if you use like a medium power rod with some braided line, you probably do has some pretty good results. So the next thing I'm going to grab probably going to grab the uh, the Euro tackle jig. So this has a heavier head on there, eighth ounce head. Uh, the tungsten head and this is a two inch B vibe. I really been liking these for catching bluegill and uh, trout in like uh, lakes. Uh, the profile allows the allows the bait to get deeper and you can still and if you do drift a lot of times to find fish I'll drift and these things drift pretty good because of that tungsten and the compact package of the plastic. So it's able to stay down even if you're drifting relatively fast. So I will turn my brake setting down a little bit. Oh, I rigged that up. Terrible, man. It took me a little while to get that jig head to fit inside the snap. Oh, there we go. That soft lock actually works pretty good on there to keep the plastic on there without tearing it up. So if you do want, if you do want to change out your plastic, it's not going to just shred it up like some other jig heads I've used. Oh yeah, I'm not in the least bit concerned with that. I do feel that this reel now that I 
the biggest difference for me. Uh, I had a lot of critical remarks of, as far as the casting, especially the lighter weight casting is uh, being too controlled. Uh, I feel that using a little bit harder casting motion in open water, it actually really opens the reel up and that, and that breaking profile is really, really nice. I'm gonna fish this a little bit slower. I can say this, this Dobbins rod is really sensitive with braid. I've never really, really used it with braid, but it actually, well, yeah, that thing, that thing zings out there pretty good. I can probably turn that brake down to four. But I can feel that uh, a big difference with the braid. I'm not usually, I'm not usually big on using braided lines either. I, I, I like them. And I think they have their place, but if I'm using an all-around line, I, I like fluorocarbon a little bit better. So comment, comment, actually comment down below. I did that on Instagram and the results were a lot different than I thought. So comment down below if you prefer braided line or fluorocarbon or mono for, uh, for your BFS reels. Man. And when I hit rocks, especially with that tungsten, it's just boom, 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 boom. You can feel it real good. Boy, that was a, that was a boomer. Oop. End of my line there. Yeah, that. And that, that when it casts out like that, it's not like I have to thumb it in the beginning and let it go. It just. Oh, that. I have to get calibrated back to braid. It just everything just feels so electric. You just think it's a it's a bite or something. But um, yeah, it is casting out there pretty good. All right, now there's one, one more lure I want to test. I do. I want to test out that Suonora pencil lure. Not really. Not really for casting, uh, more so what I'm looking at is the ability, the, the line stacking ability. Now I'm using a brighter color line so you, you guys will be able to see that. But there's there's some concerns that I read on Tackle Tour forums is that with the line guide having the same exact travel and I measured all that stuff out, is there gonna be an issue with the line stacking up on the on the lip of the spool? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna test that out, put that lure there. This is that sort of pencil bait. So I'll be doing that walking the dog motion and what I'm talking about with the how the spool doesn't go all the way to the edge of the edge of the reel. You see, there's like a little shelf there, almost to like make the the spool more narrow. I'm gonna see if I'm sitting there walking that bait, walking that bait. I'm reeling up a lot of loose line and tight line mixed up. So if there's gonna be line laying issues, I'm gonna be able to I'm gonna be able to exploit that uh, using a light topwater lure like this. The Suonora hard baits. I mean, I, I was kind of dismissive of them at first, uh, but I, they're. They're legit lures. Uh, they're, I mean, obviously, if you use something like a Lucky Craft or you know some a Mega Bass lure, of course they're gonna be better. But I mean, for treble hooks, pretty decent stock hooks on there. Uh, well balanced lures. I've used some of the the trout lures, uh, and I, I've actually caught some pretty nice fish on them. And I, I actually do like them a lot, especially for the price point. Uh, like they're they're definitely bang for your buck, better than like that. Say the Creep Aim and other stuff like that that I use a lot. But for me. If you're looking to just get into it or you just or you love someone that has a lot of pike or you just don't care about like those fine fine little details that most time don't matter i mean these suonora baits are actually pretty decent okay I'll, i over break that one i'm gonna sit there i'm gonna purposely just walk this thing real sloppy you would never walk a lure like this aggressive and sloppy in line but i'm just trying to see how that line management is I mean, it's not, it's not a far casting lure. I'm gonna sit there and just purposely just walk this thing how you're not supposed to. Get a bunch of loose line, I'll reel up some loose line, get it stuck in the water a little bit. And now my, now my line got tangled up in the hooks. I never, I never suggest using straight braid with your top water lures like this because the braid is more limp. All of this is a stiffer braid than most. Uh, I definitely suggest using a monofilament leader if you're looking to get the most action out of your lures and also not get snagged up like this. But I'm tagging, I'm just straight braid on this. Thing. Let's, let's turn that, let's take the brakes down to six. Have a little bit of fun. There we go. Oh, I got some more distance there. I mean, that's, I don't know if you can see where that is. That's respectable distance for, for finesse fishing. I mean, I'll even walk it up like this. Why not? Get that lure, get that line all, all jacked up if I can.
can't, I'm, I am even hitting this brush down here once in a while too. Just, okay. I'll do one more cast. Turn the brakes down. Ooh. That was definitely, that was definitely my fault. The line wasn't really all that messed up. Oh, I got, I got freaking stuff all over here. You know what I was most surprised about right there? That that line didn't break. Sometimes if you're using straight braid and you just hammer into a cast like that and you get a backlash, you can say goodbye to your lure, but I was actually pretty surprised there. There you go. That felt good. I'm on brake setting five. That felt pretty good. Let that lure come back up. I've been... And please don't let the, how I'm working this lure have any indication of how the lure is actually going to perform. I'm just purposely having to dive in the water, get tangled up. So with all that, if you want to look at the spool here, and keep in mind it's going to look a little bit different because the, there's colored line, so there's some yellow line stacked over here. That's really not all that bad. I have one tiny, tiny loop there. I can't say that's because of the edge. I'm going to try to get that shadow out of there. Maybe you can see it's it's uniformly stacked up there still. I mean, I can't really, I can't say that the, the edges of the spool, if you look on the top part of the spool, like looking straight down to like, about where my pinky's at, that's where you're really gonna see the, the line lay. And it's fairly flat. It's not super, super flat. Uh, but it is a little bit stacked up on the sides. But I don't feel that that's, I don't feel that that is messing with casting at all. I feel it does cast really, really well. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll end the video here. Uh, I could say that this reel does cast a lot better than I initially anticipated it casting. Uh, when I did put a little bit less line on there and I have a little bit thicker line. Uh, before I was using 0.2 Go, I was, I was using a uh, very, very thin uh, braided line by Verivis. And it was casting good, but I felt that something wasn't right. So I made sure I just went exactly what Daiwa spec specs were for the uh, for the Gekka and what they recommend. And it performs really well. So this, this line is 0.6 Go. It's about 10 pound test. Uh, if you want to use it like a, a pound test type thing. Uh, but I really, I, the line is performing well. I'm not going to say a whole bunch about it because, I, I mean, I've only used it here. Uh, so I will be doing some future content on that. I'll also be doing some more content with the Gekubish and Air TW. So whatever, if you want to see some more BFS content, uh, make sure you check that out.